Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things we found going on in open source and Linux and all that fun stuff. I am Vin Stone. That is Jill Bryant with her brand new PC. <laughs> and yeah. one Pedro Matias. He's uh, <laughs> hey man, how's it going? How's everybody doing? It is. Aww. As they say, another great day for Linux. Yes. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, Jill, yeah. speaking about that rig, man, you you just went like Hulk smash on your old one, right? And you just hooked yeah. up that taser and put it down. Oh, yeah, it, it died. Power supply went, burnt out the motherboard and my GTX 1060. <laughs> so that's no fun. So I'm building a new uh, broadcasting rig, as many of you know, and it is it is very very pink it's as pink as as my one chair shirt <laughs> and uh, it'll be in use in the next week or so and but i have tons of computers here of course why everyone why aren't you using one of those well because they're too loud <laughs> 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 my uh, system over here with a uh, four processor xeon uh yeah it sounds like a uh, motorboat engine when i turn it on <laughs> so not a good replacement for my broadcasting rig. So I need something quiet. So I'm building something quiet. <laughs> Get longer cables. Put it into the, the room. Nope. nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, you do is replace all those cables <laughs> with um, ether noodles. Then you can just run them kilometers of, well, not kilometers, but yeah. oh, meters. Yeah, there you go. Then pull it up on a thin <laughs> client and do everything. Speaking of that, man, if you follow <laughs> yes. me on social media, that that was my adventure. When was it? Monday my day off and yeah I ripped out like eight or nine cables to four sound cards out of our recording rig to move everything over to completely I mean it's completely digital now um the only analog to digital conversion we have is this microphone going through a preamp into the interface all the mix minus all the sound and all that we're bypassing that conversion which makes expanding a lot easier um we're still going to get that jack set up studio walkthrough because i outside of like putting a couple of um repurposed 10 gig nicks into the optiplexes to make me sleep better while we're doing this because i sleep during the show apparently um we'll get that out in case anybody wants to replicate it but pedro um you're buying a new AMD. All right, here we go. This is what we need yes. to ask. Here's what we need to ask. Yeah. <laughs> how, how accurate were the predictions? Because I, I was giving you a lot of grief of like you were Completely telling me the, off. <laughs> the exact model numbers that you was like, well, this is the one I'm buying. Like we don't yeah, know no, which uh, one's which. I am still totally going to buy the 3700X because the one thing that they got right was the MSRPs. Uh, the MSRP of the 3700X is going to be $329. And that is going to be an 8-core 3.6 to 4.2 or 5.3. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be an 8-core. And that's going to probably be the safe thing since it's also a 65-watt TDP part. Which is totally what this Asus B350 Prime Plus motherboard has been running for the past year or so. So mm -hmm. it's... Yeah, it, I'm I'm I'm, go I'm gonna go with that because it's within my budget that I kind of set for myself because I refuse to spend more than four hundred pounds on a processor. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> that thirty nine hundred X is looking good. It is looking very good. <laughs> That's pretty neat, man. I know a lot of people who are excited about the twelve core, and I was like, who needs a twelve core? <laughs> um, aren't you running yeah. a twelve core? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Red Ripper. Red Ripper. Although, to be fair, you. <laughs> yeah, that that is a one hundred and five TDP. The new Ryzen is a one hundred and five TDP twelve core versus your one hundred and thirty eighty one twenty five. It's hundred. Oh, okay. That, 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 Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. if it's just running at normal speed. Of course, I don't run it like that. I run it at like run as slow as you can, little buddy. So it's about 100 and 125, which still isn't that great. <laughs> anyway, that's enough playing around. Let's get right into uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people stood back and went, well, that's about time. <laughs> yeah, it yes. took them long <laughs> enough. It's, uh, yeah, uh, according to uh, Jason Evangelio, the um, proprietary NVIDIA drivers are now available on the uh, Ubuntu 19.04 or 19.10 uh, beta ISOs. 
and took them long enough. It's <laughs> it, it's uh it's been a while and if you've ever bought a new Nvidia card like say a 970 4 years ago when they came out or um a 1080 like shortly thereafter uh and you decided to do a fresh install of your operating system and the only way you could get a graphical anything to show up on screen was to just use software rendering yeah you probably wish that ubuntu and other distros included the <laughs> nvidia proprietary drivers and they do now or they're going to now so finally took them long enough yes <laughs> well poopy is like yo What's up? We had to get <laughs> yeah. permission from NVIDIA, which they did. Yeah. It makes sense. And no, I do hope that with Ubuntu introducing this, they're going to, more distros are going to go to NVIDIA. It's like, uh, can we do that too? <laughs> and to kind of get in front of it, it's like, but Pop OS already did that. We all know that's good. And that's good. And be like, yes. hey, a lot of people mm -hmm. like that. And a lot of people was like, I'm just going to use Pump because sometimes you're trying to install, you know, Ubuntu in your submarine and you don't have an internet connection. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You can get it on. Listen, man, I got NVIDIA. I love the work being done by the open source driving drivers, but that that can barely. Oh no, I know on the twenty series, man, I gave Fedora a lot of grief. I'm like, it, yeah, I had to VNC to install it. Um, but yeah, having that option out of the box configured during install is awesome. Huge mm -hmm. fan of that, and. Yeah. Uh, Hey, one thing you can say about Canonical, unlike Fedora, it doesn't try to make you feel bad for installing proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of people out there that are going, oh, but including the NVIDIA drivers. Yeah, Ubuntu already includes a lot of software that is not, you know, free in the Stallman sense. Listen, listen the Pedro, yeah. Pedro, <laughs> I only play open source video games. <laughs> <laughs> How's, um... I don't know how super tux cart nowadays. <laughs> Man, I don't know that. That is my like. Let's just end this conversation. When you're like, but <laughs> open source, and I only use the. And I was like, you only play open source video games. Well, no, that's different. And I was like, that's the only difference because where you've drawn the imaginary line in the sand. Yeah. <laughs> and most people who say that they don't even realize that. Yeah, your open source AMD graphics are still relying on closed source blobs in the kernel. Yeah. Nope, can't hear you. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah. Well, I agree with you, Van. With the success of Pop! OS, doing it via dedicated NVIDIA proprietary driver, ISO, this just makes sense. And I'm so happy that Popey and, and Wimpy and others out there were pushing for this because we needed it. And it mm -hmm. actually makes Linux, once again, even more... Uh, even more so, the best plug-and-play OS out there. Take that, Windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is thing. Up next, man, we got a little bit of news, and it's good news. It's like uh, I said on Twitter, this gentleman is an FSM damn saint, archiving 26,500 community Q&As from Ask Fedora. And you're like, what is Ask Fedora? Well, if you're on the Google and you've searched for basically anything and you click it and it's like page not found that's what ask fedora was man so i'm really <laughs> yeah. glad went through the trouble of getting this archived and put together pedro it's on um internet archive right yeah. yep it is on the internet archive and they are looking for people to help them mirror it into as many uh places as possible so that even if something happens to the Internet Archive, we hope not. Uh, yeah. But if something happens, it, it'll always be available, it'll always be there, and it will always be accessible. It's also uh, available from the askbot.fedoraproject.org. Uh, so if you go there, uh, the it's read-only, uh, but Fedora are still hosting that. I guess they saw part of what they did when they decided to upgrade from AskBot to the new um, thing whatever it was called, and they decided, you know, let's just go with the nuke and pave. And yeah, it would be nice to <laughs> have something like this and some, well, I wanted something kind of the level of the Arch Wiki, which has everything. And kudos to the uh, fine folks that curate the Arch Wiki, because that is applicable to not just Arch, 
but Fedora, Ubuntu, and yeah. quite a few other distros. Unfortunately, Fedora has always had that bit of a, I don't want to say elitist mentality, but I kind of want to say it as well. <laughs> it was never the most mm -hmm. friendly in the community sense. <laughs> hey man, watch it. Um, so me and Fedora get along well. Yeah. Oh, I like Fedora yeah. as a distro. It's just that if, now, here's what if you need is. to go I, I there and ask for it. help, I, I know. you're boned. <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah. Fedora is, think of it as Arch without the Arch wiki. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to oversimplify it. Uh, Jill, uh, yeah. father of two bad gateways. Yeah, what? so... Well, what happened to me yesterday, I was I was right, writing the show notes, and case in point, I went to the, the link in our show notes, and it said 502 Bad Gateway for the link above. So, <laughs> so I had to search for another article, which I found on, on Reddit, that talked about them moving it over to the Internet Archive, which was really awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then the, the Linux Today also, I, had, I put a link in there for that because <laughs> there, our main link uh, didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I think that's but. really good. And, <laughs> you know, one thing maybe you don't know if you're searching on Google, usually nine times out of 13, there will be an option for the drop down box in the right hand corner. It's microscopic where you can view the cached version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> that is most definitely a thing. Last week, uh, apparently the reports of Antargo's death were a yeah. bit untimely. Oh, well, well, they this... weren't timely. It's oh, just okay. that yeah. All right. someone decided to do something about it. <laughs> yeah. So this this is awesome. I was so happy to hear that the spirit of the Antargo's project will continue on in a new distro code named Endeavor. Yay! The new team is going to first move the community to a new forum because the original forum will be taken offline in three months. And they are actually looking for people from the community to join join in who know how to code, who want to help by maintaining the news and article feeds as a blogger and a vlogger. And they actually plan to start a YouTube video a log in the future and uh, wanting to continue the friendliness and, and the, the nice community that Intergos had uh, uh, created. So this is just, I was really happy to hear this. And I, yeah. good luck. <laughs> See, I'm not going to break out into Frozen's Let It Go Do uh, it. here. No. Uh, <laughs> since I, you know, the, the Jill mentioned the community. Listen, and yeah, Princess I don't... Pedro, don't, don't, don't <laughs> shortchange me. <laughs> no, 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 no. No one needs that in their lives uh, or their ears for that matter. Uh, but it's, I don't really know the uh, Anarchos community all that well. And mm -hmm. what I will say is that I have been through the experience of having a distro that you were very much involved with and you very much enjoyed just, you know, die. Mostly, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. fault of its own success and system D. Uh, but it's, yeah. It's that's something I've experienced myself, and there were talks of continuing uh, Clover. Uh, it was going to be called Clover Leaf Linux. No one remembers that, rightly so, mm -hmm. because it didn't go anywhere, really. So temper your expectations, because the distro you loved is dead. Hopefully, they'll be able to make a spiritual successor to it that will be still just as good. But temper your expectations. Yeah, man. We'll call it the Grand mm. Tour. Um. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so very 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I like the Grand Tour, by the way. Uh, yes, me too. So, yeah. his, I, I, I saw this question asked in a couple of threads. They were like, it, it was in Targos anything more than a glorified installer for Arch, though? Not really, no. <laughs> they had their own yeah. custom repo with just a couple of specific packages, mm -hmm. but it was mostly stuff designed just for that ease of use, and most of it is already a part of the AUR, and some of them were even brought yeah. into the mm -hmm. uh, Arch proper um, repos. So right now, with Banjaro actually doing a very good job of being the Ubuntu or the Linux Mint of Arch, whatever you want to call it, uh, and including the NVIDIA drivers out of the box. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, as it turns out, uh, Banjaro, again, like I said last week, they came in and ate Adarigo's cake. Hmm. 
Well, uh, at least the community wants to continue on doing some things, and you never know. Yeah. I mean, it's always good. You just keep fighting. Keep doing yeah. things that you're going to do. Uh, sometimes people don't feel like continuing the fight, though. They, they just peace out. They're like, all right, I'm No, out. no, Aww. they don't. And um, the creator of DSTAT uh, made a very passive-aggressive uh, post on his uh, GitHub page for DSTAT, and it's like, so long and thanks for all the fish. It's like, okay, that's the tone we're going for. And he says, since Red Hat decided to replace this utility with a complete framework and its own utility with the same name, and since I have zero interest to fight a multi-million company who likes replacing commands with their own, I have been in this situation before and didn't bring any joy, and since nobody is picking up the towel, let's just end this project here. So, yeah, DSTAT, the original one, is gone. And I was reading through that, it's like, okay, if what he says is true and Red Hat did take his stuff and called it something similar, I'd be a bit pissed too. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Red Hat uh, had a uh, post of their own back in February 14th, and they describe it's like, okay, DSTAT is basically dead so we decided to take it and integrate it into the uh, performance copilot PCP, not you know Pedro can Proton, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, yeah no they said they decided to integrate that and make that into just the one thing, and yeah the the story that they tell is slightly different and I'm like okay so the project was dead but that post that he made on GitHub was like seven days ago so what the hell so I go back to his GitHub I click the commits button is like oh there was a bit of a gap between november 2016 Just, and uh, <laughs> january 2019 yeah. where there were no commits well yeah. uh, as i've you know uh, not broke don't fix yeah <laughs> fair yeah. but uh yeah. the commit on january uh, uh january 2019 was about fixing lots of bugs so it's like ah, you it probably should have been stuff. doing that this whole yeah. time <laughs> um, PCPD stat, that's the thing I installed it. I yeah. typically don't use D stat, uh, which I probably should anyway, but yeah, it had been several years. Now I understand where Red Hat was coming from. They're like, no updates in three years. We want to continue using this tool. And thanks to the miracle that is open source, we can go, Hey, we can fork this over and start working mm -hmm. with it. Yep. Yeah. And we'll that take on the responsibility of keeping it updated. So yeah, I, I understand where the developers are coming from, but I also can ac absolutely see the giant Solus Corporation. You know, I know it's like, but IBM's big and evil. But hey, it's not like it's closed binary now. You know, and I'm like, no, we're, we're going no. to do some work on this and keep it updated. Is that cool? It's like, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. And expand mm. on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <Aww. laughs> Well, you know, DSTAT for many of us Linux users, of course, is the Swiss Army, Swiss Army a knife tool for monitoring system performance, benchmarking and troubleshooting, and I've actually been using it for years. And Red Hat, I'm sure, will and should give the developer of DSTAT, Dag Weir's, credit where credit is due. And as Pedro, Pedro found out, maybe there just needed to be more communication between Dag Weir's and Red Hat regarding DSTAT and the gap in commits, which suggests the, the project not being active. Because like Ven mm -hmm. says, if it doesn't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely a thing. <laughs> well, I only say that because how many times I've, have you spent the entirety of a day trying to just get back to where that day started before you fix something? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We've all been <laughs> on that happened. journey. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> it's happened enough. I was like, oh, you know, it's like 4 p.m. It's like, here we go again, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I get this done before my body shuts down and I need this? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, I, it's, the sense of accomplishment is like, yes, it's back like it was this morning before I touched anything. Yay. Uh, okay, quit theming apps, man. Quit the minutes. Yeah. yeah, this one blew up uh, yeah. early. It was uh, like late last week and earlier this week. There were a bunch of people reposting this and retweeting this. And uh, yeah, so apparently a bunch of people uh, who develop applications for GNOME were a bit uh, disillusioned by the uh, theming uh, options that, you know, themes uh, for GTK offer. 
and some of them outright broke the uh, certain bits of functionality or the entire aesthetic that they were going for with the application and the icons being able to change the icon is basically like you go in and you go to coca-cola and you say we don't like your logo here's a new logo we're just going to use that for you it's like you can't do that yeah so they decided to get together and they start uh, started a bit of a web page it's a stop uh, theming my dot app very good use of a top level domain there very good indeed uh, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, and it's basically these developers asking some of the names you may even recognize as someone who develops your app of preference. And they say, please, if you have to, like, have the option to let people apply their the theme that they're using for the rest of their desktop to our application, at least uh, give them a choice between using the theme you know, using the CSS file from the theme or just having the one that's built in and that the developer created. Because that's how the app should work. I yeah. I kind of feel like it. <laughs> that I, if you move a UX element, you should get booped on the nose. That's mm-hmm. all I'm going to say. True. I mean, don't, don't, I, it should never be yeah. here in one place and here in another for no reason in the history of ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I like what our very own Matthew Commandant, developer Lutra, said on Twitter that there needs to be better and clear documentation for what is themable and what is not, rather than, than to discourage theming completely. Completely agree, Matthew. And there really needs to be a unified GTK, GTK theme API, not a set of hard to use and hack CSS style sheets. I've played with those before, not fun. XKCD927. And- Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Good one, Pedro. <laughs> and I love and want to keep the theming and uniqueness of Pop! OS, Linux Mint, Ubuntu, etc. And both theme creators and app developers need better guideline, guidelines for theming and, and their errors herein. You know, we just, yeah. we just need better, a better option so we can stop arguing and, and get it organized. <laughs> <laughs> and as uh, Popey and Shetrel uh, brought up, you may know him, yeah. Mr. Alan Pope himself. It's like yes. this is a met distros, not users. They don't like that Ubuntu ships Yaru, which is the default uh, theme for <laughs> the just the base version of GNOME of Ubuntu, and System76 uh, shifts their own Pop OS theme. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's the <a> theme? <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, yes, this is... <laughs> as someone who has used many themes in many different desktop environments at once, one thing I can tell you, Ven, is that mm-hmm. themes generate error logs. Yes. <laughs> Tons of them. Okay, I'm going to continue not knowing what a theme is. <laughs> yes. Ven, Ven, Ven I mean, uses zero as that, in black. That uh, high contrast in... theme that you have on XFCE, that's a theme. <laughs> So I can see. It is. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would say, like, when I think of themes, that's a, is 100% cosmetic. I was like, change the button <laughs> widgets, you know? That, mm-hmm. Okay. Keep everything in place, but just change, change colors. colors. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's yeah. what I would expect from a theme. If anything moves at any point, I'm like, no, I don't deal with that. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll get into <laughs> themes when xfc 414 launches next month and yeah I, <laughs> okay it, it, it will just be a kaleidoscope of nightmare rainbows all over my desktop <laughs> yeah. <GLX compositing. laughs> uh, all right <laughs> fund your work build what matters connect with a community that depends on your work receive recurring funds to build your shared digital infrastructure and we're not talking about paid patreon no nay we're talking about get up I know, right? Mm-hmm. You're thinking about that. It's kind of adopting the Patreon model, man. I mean, yeah. if you get a project mm-hmm. on here and you would, this is a beautiful idea to help fund the people making the software that you use. And yes, I know. It's like, but it's Microsoft. But listen to the good they're doing here. Listen. Okay. First off, just the, the, the Octocat, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've had a problem with it for years. All right. This is Aww. new. Um, so for the first year, <laughs> they are going to even cover the payment processing. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get 100%, 100% of the support that anybody wants to kick your way. And that's brilliant because you do got to say, this is a good way to get people who might have uh, pressed that note button to at least uh, give 
uh, GitHub a second chance. They're like, all right, maybe we can come back. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, Microsoft doomsday naysayers and whatnot, this is good for development. This is good for software it is. engineers. Um, yeah, you give great people for a projects. budget. It's, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. And uh, uh, Popey, I, I would be happy to send Ben some GitHub Octocat stickers. I have hundreds of them, including on this cabinet, before they got taken over by Microsoft. <laughs> You've been in Tasmania, but Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What really surprised me here was it's like, okay, so Microsoft is enabling a Patreon style of thing for GitHub. How big of a cut are they taking? And they specifically say, we're not taking a cut. And like Ven yeah. mentioned, for the first year, they're going to be covering the fees. Now, after that year, someone will have to eat those fees, and it's not going to be GitHub or Microsoft. Uh, but they're not taking a cut from it. That's very yeah. good. I would like That's to speak to the majority expect. of everyone, and we <laughs> sit back, and we've said it on this show multiple times, and Microsoft does something good it triggers these like w what's up yeah what's it's coming <laughs> yeah it's what's like coming? because they're, <laughs> microsoft see it's a huge company they got some old dna baked into it but there are parts of redman that are genuinely trying to do some good here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know this is actually an ingenious way to keep developers on github and get paid wow it's it's wonderful and all you need is a GitHub account, and you can sponsor anyone with a sponsored developer profile through a reoccurring monthly payment, which is really awesome, just like what we do on Patreon. And like Ven was saying, so this is a lot nicer than winning a limited edition T-shirt for GitHub's annual Hacktoberfest <laughs> that they were prom they promote every year, but Microsoft was really promoting it. So <laughs> this is good. This is yeah. good, and you know it might even have the benefit <laughs> awesome. of. You know, there's there some projects that I would love to give money to, but they are not on anything. You know, it's like, where's well, Mercurial? I'm like, geez, really? Uh, <laughs> I guess someone had to, it's right? like, why not CVS? I mean, if we're going to hipster it, Ben. Um, yeah. So, all right. I'm looking forward to that. I'm definitely going to be kicking some coin in their direction. Speaking of yeah. open source projects. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is really awesome. Logitech is now a diamond sponsor of the Open Broadcaster Software project on Open Collective. Yay! Yay and this, OBS. Uh, <laughs> yes, OBS, OBS. So this falls on the heels of the XSplit Software and Games Done Quick website, who are gold tier sponsors. So this is is this is the their first diamond sponsor as well as the highest. Thank you, Logitech. And this definitely makes sense for Logitech, who have been in the communications devices space for years. How many of us are using a Logitech C920 webcams right now? Right here. <laughs> All of us broadcasting <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Subfan, yeah, he's got his own special camera <laughs> that sees special things. I, I have my Hello Kitty <laughs> Island Adventure <laughs> camera. <laughs> Jill, don't do a Logitech commercial because your camera's about to die any minute. It is. I need, I need a new one, uh, maybe on the Wish Zone. I don't know. But um, in February, we, wish, we talked about Open Collective as a way to support OBS development. And it's like Patreon, but for companies. So this is yep. just really awesome to see OBS now uh, getting sponsors. Awesome. Pedro, help me out. What's this OBS thing? I've never heard of it. <laughs> uh, well, you're using it right now. I don't oh, know how geez. you've never heard of it, but you're using it right now. Yeah. Uh, you tell me, why <laughs> did you wait this <laughs> It's been years. <laughs> yeah, and when it first came out, because, yeah, seeing Ven uh, back in the early, early days of LGC do the FFM peg ma FFM peg magic, it's like, I can't wrap my head around that. And then OBS shows up with the Linux version. It's like, I can wrap my head around this. Yeah. And, yeah, it is... <laughs> a genuinely really good front end for FFmpeg and Logitech came in it's like oh what's that 50,000 wet stinky caches yeah there you go awesome <laughs> like, yay very well done there Logitech well done, very well Logitech. done <laughs> call me um, <laughs> I can start using a Logitech webcam again um, <laughs> no that, that that is brilliant and OBS um, um coming out and going open source and doing that from you know the where it started out 
has just made it a better project as a whole. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's allowed, you know, with the, it's awesome. You got kids today, you know, kids are like dreaming about them. You know, you still got kids that's like, I want to be a professional sports player and all that. And then you got some that's like, I want to be a professional gamer. Then they're still it's like, hey, man, I want to be a professional streamer, which could lead them into broadcasting and all this other fun yep. stuff. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to drop a check out of their milk money, their allowance money, or like hit up mom and dad when they're 12. They can get started using yeah. open source software like that. And I think yeah. that's awesome. That is yeah. good. It's and amazing. thank you, Logitech. For helping them out with that. So yes, that yes. was very nice. So we go from something very nice to something very uh, baffling. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a teeny tiny project that I saw show up on my Twitter feeds. Like that can't be what it does. That is exactly what it does. And what it does is put the current CPU load in your bash prompt. N not as a, uh, you know, the output of a command. No, 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 no. The bit that shows up before you start typing the command. That is your uh, CPU load. It's like, but, but, but why, though? <laughs> why? Aww. Does it need to? Does I'm it need confused. a purpose? Lead Haxor? <laughs> All the things? I like using the Hollywood app that, uh, <laughs> the, the that hacker admittedly, you gooey. know, the, the Hollywood thing has a couple of, um, uh, useful uses, tools practical. built yeah. into it. Yes. There's a practical <laughs> use to it, even if it's just for you to put on at work and look like you're busy when you're actually not. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've watched Star Wars in a terminal, so you can just shut up yes. with your why. Yes. I give the spin. It's of questionable use. It's 24 threads, but... Yeah, even 12 is... Wait. It's like, okay, yeah. my terminal window isn't that big, so I'm just typing on the second line now. Okay. Hey, go check it out. I mean, listen, this would be another in the long list of, like, silly things i i don't know the, about the actual usefulness of it but it's still cool all right yeah at the end of the day it, it is it, it's neat but why though ladies and gentlemen <laughs> boys and girls <laughs> because you earlier can. this week you know you, you, i think it was even last week i thought i had broken chrome it something mm. went wrong went horribly wrong and yeah. i was going to have to like wipe chrome reinstall it which i did didn't fix the issue <laughs> turns out uh it was a feature not a bug we're talking about uh there's a thing in chrome now where it prioritizes search words over the visited sites now this drove me insane because i would go to like linux game li this you know or l mm -hmm. would or if i'm going to youtube it's just y or if i'm going to reddit it's r and it's muscle <laughs> memory it's tap 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 and it was giving me search terms at the top I'm like what's going on this is insane there's a fix okay everyone who has this problem really easy it's in the chrome flags you just omnibox drive suggestions <laughs> yeah. nope nope that from Doesn't orbit 100 percent <laughs> kill it oh it works perfectly fine yeah but but it's still yeah. it, it it's just <laughs> irritating so and it is very irritating because one of the biggest uh, things that pushed me back from Chrome way back when, get off my lawn, was the fact that it didn't have a drop down on the uh, search bar. Because mm -hmm. that at the mm -hmm. time, you know, as I like to use things for the wrong purpose, was my bookmarks. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yours and a lot of people's. I would a just click down and be like, where was I at? There we go. Now it is, you know, same way with Firefox, with the awesome bar, I just type the first few letters and it's muscle memory to hit down and enter. And, and yeah, it's fixed now. You're welcome. Or maybe it doesn't bother you. Maybe this is the new hotness. You're like, this is awesome. I've always wanted to perform random searches on two letters at a time. So yeah, well, at least it's not Firefox because on Firefox nowadays, if you type something that it even assumes that it could be a uh, URL, you're just going to go into a broken URL instead of just going to the next result over, which is the actual site you want it to go to. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Same no, here, no. Vin. You know, I thought it was broke. Or one of my, actually, I, I honestly, I thought one of my plugins had messed it up. 
And I kept getting LWW show note listings from G Drive in my address bar when I typed L. <laughs> Anytime I typed L, it was so annoying. So all the LWW show notes would come up. <laughs> and I, sometimes I was looking for it, but mostly <laughs> I was looking for other things. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This is, <laughs> I know. I, I genuinely, I, I did think in the back of my, my brain meets, it's like, this better not be, a, oh no, it's a feature. It um, is. <laughs> hey, as long as I can disable it, the second that is not disabled, there are other browsers. That's all I'm saying, man. I'll be living that edge lifestyle. How about that? That would upset some people, wouldn't it? It's just Chrome. It's just Chrome nowadays. No, 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 Microsoft told me it wasn't just Chrome. It says it says Edge, totally not yeah. just Chrome. That's like the slogan. I have a lot of Windows 10 at work. It's just Chrome. Oh, man, quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, we a little bit of shameless self-promotion. If you like what we do, I've updated some things on the web zone uh, for good, for worse. Uh, more on this in a minute in our about section. I've made a studio equipment page if you've ever wanted to like tease mm -hmm. your inner voyeur and be like oh what are all the parts and the bits we've updated the support thing to include so you can straight up creep on jordan and pedro they have their mm -hmm. own wish list i have an extremely boring one for the studio which has got cables and stuff in it they're a lot more interesting than we are and uh i broke out the affiliate links so if anybody uses those for whatever reason uh it's been updated because we what is it, Pedro? We're Amazon influencers, or we're yes. in a new program. We have a blue <laughs> check mark. We have our own Amazon storefront where right. you can buy stuff on Amazon, and it won't cost you anything extra. Very similar to the uh, uh, how the well, this is how uh, the list the works. Man. Work. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been threatening to do this for like years, and here's a way to do it. Yep. So this is we used to say, "Hey, go to our wish list and like sort by purchase," and they got rid of that ability, mm -hmm. but. Like, hey, I know a lot of people are curious about audio, and you can go buy this stuff on Newegg. We're not saying buy it through this, but you'll at least be able to track it down. You know, the USB DAX. Um, there's Pedro's headset. Yes. Headset used by Pedro. <laughs> there's my it's mic It's cheaper arm. than the one Ven has. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so FireWire cards, all the microphones that we use individually, rack equipment, and all that. And, I mean, it goes the same with electric lighting, networking, storage, video, displays, what we're saying is you can play the home game. And I thought maybe that will be of some use, you know, instead of like, I wonder what's this or, you know, and everything, you know, works with Linux, yep. which, you know, e even the equipment rack, Linux compatible, 100% didn't have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, there is, uh, if you do uh, get us something from the wish list, we are contractually obliged to read certain notes. So, yeah, uh, Strider, uh, for totally <laughs> sick RBG vape What'd FX, uh, uh, he sent me Did he send you five a meters, oh, that's five weasel. whole Yay! meters of RGB Matthew. LED strip lights. So, <laughs> yes, Pedro there will be own. something uh, that will be done with this uh, teeny tiny. That's five meters. It's like I'm looking at this roll right here. It's like. Yeah, that's that's five meters of RGB LEDs. We're gonna make a Pedro tree <laughs> and burn it. So I mean. thank you, Strider. Thank you very much. Yay, Matthew. <laughs> that is brilliant. Um, thanks everybody for making this possible, especially the what are we, 121 beautiful party patrons uh, kicking us 286 bucks a week. Not for just this show, Saturday show, Tuesday, Thursday streams, and we did a special for the AMD event. We're gonna be doing another one of those for CES, but hey. Uh, if you kick us some coin for that, you get access to our Campagan room, our uh, Discord. You can come and hang out. Nothing's behind a paywall. We have IRC if you want to come chat live with us. But we do do a special show every Saturday, an hour early, which is our production meeting. Mm -hmm. Come check that out if you want the latest hot takes on uh, programming, Game of Thrones, and uh, experiments that we're trying that may or may not make it into production. That is kind of brilliant. Thank you. Yes. We, we've yeah. gotten to do so much more than what we used to. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Of course, we want to keep rocking on. Yes. You lot so, are insane we, and we love you for it. <laughs> we love you, chat realm. You're enablers. You should feel bad. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> keep feeling bad. I highly recommend feeling bad. And if not for us, support those who support Linux. Cause I know I do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of brilliant. So. <laughs> Jill? Oh, yeah, this is the... Oh, <laughs> that's a cute picture, Ben. 
<laughs> so this is the <laughs> Node Mini Server version two is out and is a great do-it-yourself Raspberry Pi based server that you can use for decentralized web applications and or as a NAS or whatever you would like. It's really actually really beautif beautifully uh, put together. And it has a Raspberry Pi 3, a 2.5 inch hard drive and other components inside a tiny 3D printed case. They used every, every bit of uh, space. And uh, the face plates on the top and bottom also function as a heat sink, which will extend its life. It's definitely, you know, it, it's, it's made as an enterprise level uh, uh, server case. So, <laughs> so, so you can use it in production for a long time without your uh, without having everything burn out on you <laughs> which is yep. really nice and, and if you yeah, yeah if you are looking <laughs> for something that you can carry around and you know the tsa doesn't immediately throw you in guantanamo bay because that looks like a bomb uh <laughs> it's uh yeah it that is it's going to require a bit more work and probably a little bit more money but it looks good Oh, yeah. a raspberry pi portable basically what they have there is just like a networked uh hard drive but yeah <laughs> that's pretty good it's and it beautiful. looks like an external hard drive so it's like yeah that's pretty yeah. good <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's it gonna cost can you buy it uh yeah the, some coin? i looked at the, the kits and currently they were sold out um mm, one of those okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they, I guess they have to make some more and put them on their website because they have a mini one, but they didn't have the mm -hmm. bigger one available. <laughs> well, stay tuned to that. Yeah. If you're looking for it, all this is going to be in our show notes. So you can go yeah. to uh, linuxcmcast.com, tap that button, and you will find every single thing. Mm -hmm. Something that I really wish was around mm -hmm. like 20 years ago when I was buying digital stomp pedals at. Uh, prices that make your eyes bleed, but we have Pi FX, a Raspberry Pi based pedal board. So mm -hmm. this is an advanced DIY, pr probably not for anyone listening to this show, but maybe you're into the musics and you don't want to, um, like, maybe your Zoom 505 died and you want to replace it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this would be great. <laughs> Integrated, you know, you do, what, one, six, seven, eight clicks, wah wah pedal, and all that, but these things are very expensive. Yes. But you can replace a lot of it with a $35 Raspberry Pi. And this this is just a cool project from going back in the day and doing a lot of stuff. And it got my attention because we've slowly but surely been transitioning off of um, hardware and going for mm -hmm. software for doing the show, mainly so I can put together something for the rest of the internet. I'm like, here, go do it yourself. You don't even have to buy anything. And yeah, he even has to deal with latency, which is something that I have to deal with daily. That's kind of fun, but a tutorial for doing it and build materials is not terribly expensive. Two hundred twenty-four dollars, like that, might sound like a bit, yeah. But what you're replicating is going to be even used. You're going to be looking at like three to four hundred bucks. So, yeah, yeah easily. <laughs> really Sometimes cool. Thousands. <laughs> really neat. Again, maybe slightly advanced, but this guide on Medium, dude, walks you all the way through it. This is mm -hmm. nothing left to the imagination. So. You know, hey man, you you and he even did. It's not a pizza yeah. uh, box, but it is a cardboard box that he mounted everything to. Because hey, it. prototyping, right, <laughs> dude? Yeah. On a budget, man. I'm a huge fan of this. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've never straight up built a PC. Amazon box, of course, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> I'm down with that. It's got nice little stump switches on it. So yeah, brilliant. Just that's cool. That's cool. That's using a pie for something that at one point in my life was near to dear to my Aww. wallet. Um, yeah, definitely. It, the sample sounded really good, too. He went into different uh, genres of music and it was it sounded very good. You can play yeah. with it. Uh, get ready to go down the nightmare of um, plugins and how each one Adds its own special latency to the loop, and you get oh man, it's fun, it's great. I highly suggest you. What were you saying, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, if you actually look at the uh, the parts list, the most expensive bits are the Raspberry Pi itself and the teeny tiny seven inch touch screen that uh, he used. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like at the, the top of the article, you see the dream, and I'm looking at that, it's like, 
You build that out of a Raspberry Pi and some bit of 3D printed or some recycled plastic with some switches that you bought on RS Electronics or wherever really cheap. That is amazing. That is freaking amazing. You could replicate <laughs> it. Now, I would go a little hard mode with that. I would find a stomp box that is the dead. Yeah. And actually Got integrate it. the pedal. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I would go down that road. Hey, maybe you at home like to integrate <laughs> pedals and you want to tell us all about it. Uh, yes, you got a, yeah, questions, like thoughts, yeah. hints, allegations. You won't be like, I want these weirdos to get back in touch. You know, you can leave a comment on YouTube. We do read those. But the best mm -hmm. way to get a hold of us, Pedro, how do mm -hmm. they do it? <laughs> well, the best way is to go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. Make sure uh, on the show box you pick uh, LWDW because that's the show where we take your feedback. Of course, if you want to send some hate mail for that Saturday show we do, you can do that too. Just give us your name, your email, subject, and whatever you'd like to ask, whatever you'd like to share. Uh, if you did build something really awesome with the Raspberry Pi, let us know. We'd be more than happy to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that that's it. You don't even have to prove that you're smarter than Ven's CAPTCHA. <laughs> uh, you don't but it'll tell you if you're not yeah <laughs> yeah if you're going through a vpn it will trigger it <laughs> maybe a vpn it also does a um, contextual um analyzing of like word patterns and it's pretty oh, yeah. yeah we we give a company mm -hmm. some money for that but it's worth mm -hmm. it yeah it all right uh back to antargos maybe this will be the last we ever speak of that once glorious project. Aww. It could be, but uh, Cody apparently, yeah, the, on the fact that uh, Energos died, it's like, when is uh, <laughs> the part where we fork and rename Energos to Venstones Linux? Kind of like the Flintstones Linux, uh, only not as rock hard. <laughs> this terrible joke was worth every second of my life. Kudos, Cody. You, you got hey, need Cody. to read that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Arch, all the things, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't like using the tinker toy of Linux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something to be said about you know sitting down, hitting the power button, and stuff just working. You know, I'll, I'll be a hundred percent. Like LTS, like all of these boxes are running eighteen oh four. LTS, and you know why? Except for this box, because I needed to get DaVinci up and running, and this is closer to Red Hat. Um, unlike this Fedora box, every day is not an adventure. When I crack open DNF and I'm like, oh boy, let, let, let's, <laughs> let's see if everything's going to be the same after the, a quick reboard of this. And, you know, some people like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Latest yeah. and greatest. You, you think about it differently when you have to replicate results. Daily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you have to use Solus, it for work. <laughs> yeah. Solus uh, rolling this through that it is, they actually do a reasonable job of making sure that everything is working, except for that stupid kernel bug with the Bluetooth, because that still hasn't been fixed. But that's the kernel's fault, yeah. not Solus's. <laughs> don't, don't blame the kernel, man. He makes delicious chicken. <laughs> Leave him out of your war. Okay. <laughs> Sensors, man. Uh, what Mer Mercia? <laughs> Mercia? Um, Mercia? <laughs> Mercia? Yeah. All right. Why not, man? Uh, Game of Thrones, baby. I have spent considerable hours Googling, like Googling only adding, uh, okay, words to my confusion. Can someone give me some instructions on how I can actually get all my sensors, like band speed and drive temperature? Right now, mm -hmm. oh, this is for Pedro. KDE only shows CPU. Thanks. Uh, that, and now that's the million dollar question. Isn't it? Uh, yes. Let me guess. You have an AM4 motherboard because that's the only way that KDE and LM sensors, uh, that's the only way that you get the uh, K10 temperature and nothing else. And it it is unfortunate that that is still the case. But uh, yeah, if you want to get the rest of the sensors, you need to Google for your motherboard specifically with sensors and yeah. sooner or later, you're going to end up in one of three different GitHub mm -hmm. repos, which will have the module that is not included in the kernel. Maybe you'll be lucky and whatever distro you have, probably Arch has it in the AUR or something. Um, but if not, you're going to have to build it from sauce yourself. Like, 
I've been doing because uh. IT87, <laughs> I have had to build that kernel mm. module many, many times if I want to see more than the K10 temperature of my um, Asus B350 Prime Plus motherboard. Uh, yeah, it it's it, it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of things to <laughs> look at that. Uh, go go ahead, Joe. You actually wrote something down. Yeah. Well, yeah, just like Pedro was saying, yeah, it greatly depends on your motherboards. I've been fortunate and I haven't ran into those problems. So I just Intel use, motherboard. <laughs> yes, I use Intel motherboards <laughs> mostly. Um even even my AMD chips are in on Intel motherboards. So the LM sensors, P sensor, and hard info are what I use. And I actually put a a, a link in the show notes um for some other options out there, including a program called STUI, which is a terminal user interface app that, that shows you all your sensor information and and everything. So, um, yeah, um, that's one I've never tried. So I've been wanting to try that. And that's in the show notes as well. So hopefully those will work for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. But it sounds like you're going to have to recompile. <laughs> so. That's their way of doing this. Let me tell you the Vin way of doing this. <laughs> It, it the Vin way of doing something is kind of like the wrong way of doing things, only faster. <laughs> Out of the box, now I'll agree with Pedro. You're really going to get some very basic things with AMD, like B350. However, mm -hmm. out of the box, most of the time, LM sensors isn't even installed. Yeah. So, <laughs> step one: LM sensors install. That step two: pseudo LM sensors detect. Now. This is where a lot of people are going to get scared because it's going to ask you a bazillion questions and it's going to be like, this could harm anything. <laughs> F it. Just hammer that Y button, fam, until it gets down to the end. Give <laughs> yeah. it a reboot. Nine <laughs> times out of 13, you'll at least have your fans. You'll probably have your T-Die and TCL. And remember on AMD, which one is it, Pedro? That's a, uh, what is that, 20 degree offset on? Uh, there is a 10 Celsius oh, offset. Okay. Uh, on the K10. Mm -hmm. So if you have the K10 temperature, just deduct 10 from that, and that's what your processor is currently going at. So, yeah. Uh, if you install the IT87, it actually gives you the accurate one, but like uh, Katana Steel mentioned in Chat Realm, IT87 is not updated anymore, so I hope you have a clone of that Git. If you don't, let me know. I'll Yeah. You. If you yeah. have a Tomahawk yeah. B350 <laughs> and you want that particular module, which will give you slightly more than what's included, uh, I made a video on that almost two years ago, which it still yep. works. It's still effective. On Threadripper, the offset's 24 degrees, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. significant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are things you Google when you're like, oh, boy, I really didn't put that thermal based on, right? Did I? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's the easy way to do it with KD. I have no idea what the, what is it like applets or whatever on KDE. Or? It's, yeah, the the plasmoid that gives you that it just uh, lifts directly from whichever sensor software you have installed. So if you have LM sensors, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that is actually picking up on stuff. You'll get the options for everything else. But if not, mm -hmm. then yeah, you're basically stuck with K10. Hmm. Right on, right on. Okay, we're done. We've yep. talked about yeah. Linux ad nauseum. <laughs> Yay! We played yeah. with pies, we played with temperatures, and we said good a good thing about Microsoft, kind of, technically. Don't dig into that too much if you skip to the end. Just take my word on it. We're going to bounce out of here, roll some credits, and all the beautiful people. Yay. Indeed. We love our Patreons. <laughs> I mean, if it weren't for the insane number of people, which is actually, seriously, we love you all, but yeah. it, it, you're crazy. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> Don't call Patreons crazy because I back a lot of people on Patreon now. <laughs> yeah. I've turned into, uh, I don't know, what is it, like, ultimate... I, I don't watch any broadcast TV. Man. Like, mm -hmm. That's kind of my rule. Yeah. Like, I, I've said that years ago. Well, like, however long we've been on mm -hmm. Patreon. I was glad when that came out because, like, anybody that I take time, like, to watch live, I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a buck, yeah. too. Because I'm making a schedule Aww. for that. But it's allowed me to finance other people you know? I mean, i'm not necessarily yeah. making it rain but like 10 bucks here you know five bucks there and works. even just yeah you know if you can only get like a dollar a month or a dollar a week that adds up because if you have yeah. 
a lot more people like you that also contribute. That is awesome! That is the bulk of our uh, Patreon, so thank you all very much. Aw, <laughs> thank you. Awesome.